Welcome back, everyone. In today's video, I want to make you aware of the latest wave of doom and gloom to strike the artificial intelligence shores. How is that for a metaphor? In all seriousness, about six or seven months ago, some researchers in Switzerland published a paper where they were able to detail how their rather simple deep Q learning agent was able to stealthily deploy malware on a Raspberry Pi without being detected. Now, I'm going to show you the results from this, but it's quite scary in that very simple algorithms using very sparse resources are able to achieve um, total deployment, meaning total success of the malware in just a few uh, hours of training uh, with a very high success rate. So how does all of this work? Well, let me show you. So the authors are kind enough to provide this image here that sort of details their system. So you have the deep Q learning agent that deploys a subset of uh, some ransomware. We'll talk about that in a second. And that is deployed onto a Raspberry Pi. Now this Raspberry Pi is um, in the simulation is running in like a Wi-Fi venue. It's running Wi-Fi for a venue of say a festival or something like that. And so if you can encrypt that Raspberry Pi, you can disrupt the operations of the festival. And in theory, you know, you can come to the owners, the um, people running the festival and say, hey, uh, pay me some Bitcoin or Monero if they're really pros and we will, you know, decrypt the encryption and get you guys back up and running. Of course, you're going to have uh, anti-malware software running. In this case, it is an anomaly, an, an anomaly detector that uses conventional machine learning algorithms to look for disruptions in the state fingerprint of the system. So the state fingerprint in this case is, uh, you know, the background operations of your system. The, you know, the processes that are running that are consuming CPU and RAM resources. There's going to be some distribution of processes consuming some distribution of resources that are going to correspond to the normal operation of your system. And of course, when malware is deployed, that is going to be disrupted. And so the system can look for deviations from the, you know, the normal cluster of operations in that fingerprint space. And this feeds into a reward function where the agent is rewarded for encrypting at as high of a rate as possible while not being detected in its nefarious operations. And all of this is fed back into the deep Q learning agent so that it is able to encrypt the system as quickly and as quietly as possible. So what is our action space here? So in a previous video, I detailed how DeepMind was able to uh, use deep, uh, deep reinforcement learning to actually write assembly code to optimize sorting algorithms. This isn't anything so advanced. You know, we're not dealing with commands in assembly. We're actually dealing with the deployment of pre-written encryption algorithms. So I don't know what any of these mean here. I am not an encryption or cybersecurity guy, uh, but the basic idea is that we have six different um, applications of ransomware that in encrypt at various rates uh, in various bursts, meaning that it'll encrypt for a little bit and then stop, and then uh, various pauses between different bursts. So you have a variety of algorithms that, that encrypt at different rates in different ways to kind of confound the machine learning detector. If you've been a long time follower of this channel, you know that the reward structure in deep reinforcement learning plays a critical role. If you're new to reinforcement learning, the reward structure plays a similar role to the labels in supervised learning. It tells your neural network the expected outcome for a given initial configuration. So here we see a relatively interesting uh, reward structure where you have two different reward functions that uh, penalize detection and then reward the encryption rate where R is the encryption rate. So it's natural, has a log, natural log dependence on the encryption rate and a negative one over uh, negative res relationship with the detection rate. All of this is fairly complicated. This is, I'm not certain how they settled on this reward structure, but it seems to work relatively well. And what I really love about this paper is that you know, in most papers, they don't talk a lot about how they did their hyperparameter tuning, whereas here they give a huge uh, chunk of the paper devoted to hyperparameter selection. They do a fairly significant study uh, regarding um, activation functions, learning rates, discount factors, all these kinds of things, weight initialization, all kinds of stuff that they use to uh, tune the performance of the deep Q learning agent, which you re don't really see in other papers. So if you're curious how people are able to um, fine tune their agents to a new environment, reading this paper would, would go a long way towards answering your questions. So how well did it did? And this is actually the scary part. So you can see that after 100 episodes, 
uh, two minutes of learning, it achieves an accuracy of 91%. That means that it's able to encrypt the system 91% of the time with just two minutes of learning using a simple DeepQ learning agent running on sparse hardware, meaning, you know, not some giant H100 cluster. Within um, about an hour of learning, it achieves a 99% uh, encryption rate. Uh, pretty startling stuff. And then within, you know, about three hours, it achieves 99.71%. So not a huge difference. De certainly the law of diminishing returns is kicking in there. So this is incredibly uh, kind of startling stuff to me. The fact that you're able to do something so nefarious with so little resources, it's only a matter of time before we see things like this deployed in the wild and only a little bit longer until you see the deployment of even more sophisticated stuff. But what do you guys think? Am I being just a little bit alarmist here? Am I overreacting? Am I just trying to get clicks and views? That's certainly the case. I am a YouTuber after all, but I do think personally that this is kind of a looming problem that must be dealt with, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts down below. Now, if you would like to stay one step ahead of this stuff, it's time for my shameless plug. I sell courses. They are linked down below. I show you how to implement papers like these, starting from just the paper, going all the way through to replicating the results of said papers. Check the links in the description for that. And hey, if you don't want to pay any money, I don't blame you. Times are tough. But what you could do for me is hit that subscribe button, the like button. That costs you nothing. And either way, I'll see you in the next video.